Hey guys, welcome back. Another Briggs engine on a lawn tractor here. Customer wants me to tell him if the engine is blown or not. And as you guys know, you've seen quite a few of these in my pre previous videos where the engines are blown up. Let's hope that this one's not blown up here today. First thing I check when somebody comes in and is wondering if their engine is blown up is I check the oil level. And this one is extremely low. So normally you'd want the oil level to be in the serrated marks here, but you wouldn't want it this low. So this doesn't look good guys. And I'll see if this thing even turns over. And it spins really easy. It spins like there's no spark plug in there. The spark plug is in there actually. Now I'm pretty sure that this engine is blown up guys, but first I will take the plug out, put a screwdriver, spin the, over, the engine over here by hand. If the screwdriver moves up and down, then the rod's not blown. If it doesn't move, the rod is blown. I'm 99.9% .9 sure it is broken, but anyway, I'm going to show you guys this just in case you're diagnosing an engine in your shop or at home. So let's get the spark plug cap off. And here's the old plug. And now I'll just get the screwdriver in the spark plug hole. So as you can see here, I am turning it, nothing's moving. So the connecting rod is definitely blown. Okay, so I've got the engine on my table here. I will do another uh, quick tear down and we're going to see all the damage in there. Wow, this one's pretty bad, guys. Look at all the pieces. A lot of little pieces in this one. Again, this is what I see often. I've been basically getting one a week in the shop here for most of the summer uh, with a blown engine like this. And it's always the Briggs single cylinder engines. Now let's hope that the camshaft is savable. And I think this one might be good. The little decompressor works. That's what you want to see here, is this come back. So that's a good find. Save this. And there's a lot of other parts in here as well that are all grenaded. That's the connecting rod, by the way. And there's a lot of pieces of the connecting rod. And what I suspect caused this engine failure was low oil and not replacing the oil often enough. So if you don't replace your oil the way you should at least once or twice every summer and if on top of that you don't have enough oil in the engine it's definitely going to blow up on you. And on this engine here I'm going to save the usual, the carburetor, uh, just like you've seen me doing the previous videos I'll save the flywheel, the head. If the push rods are good I do save those as well. So since I'm not saving this engine or the crankshaft, I'm just going to put the bolt back in here, put a pry bar under the flywheel and just pound it. Normally what I do uh, with a good engine is I use a puller. Now doing it this way here, you, you are not damaging the flywheel. And it actually works pretty good. And don't forget to wear your safety glasses also when you do this.
and this flywheel is in really good condition so I'm going to save that as I mentioned in other videos that flywheel here in Canada costs around three hundred dollars the reason I'm saving the alternator to put in another engine is just so that all my plugs match up on the lawn tractor it just makes swapping an engine so much easier and I'll set the coil And here's the alternator here with the entire wiring harness. But before I save it, I'm just going to feel inside the cylinder. And you know what? That cylinder doesn't feel too bad. So I'm just going to save it the way it is because in the future, if I decide to rebuild it, it's so much easier if most of the parts have not been taken off. But I will take off the starter though. Kind of hard to get at this bolt here. Now this was a 20 horsepower engine so I'm just going to write on a marker on the block here that it's a 20 horsepower engine. 20 HP. There's so many variations of these engines with different horsepowers so you want to make sure you know what you're dealing with because if I put this away and I go to retrieve it a year from now and if I didn't write that on there, I will not remember what size of engine this was. Now the good thing about leaving the head on the engine is that I can have the information available to me about this engine with the model number here. But besides that, I'm just going to put it away because I don't have another 20 horsepower single cylinder engine to take parts from. But I may have enough parts with all the engines I've taken apart this summer to make one or two more engines when I get time. The problem I have is I'm so full in the repair shop here and it's extremely hard for me to get at these projects here unless I really need an engine. Okay guys, so I put another engine I had sitting in the back shed here. It's a little smaller, it's a 15.5. There won't be that much difference in power anyways. And this engine here is a little bit older than the other one and they're actually a bit better. And I'll just start it up here to show you. Anyway, if you want to see a full engine swap, guys, I do have a video on my channel and the link is in the video description and in the comment section. It's pretty easy. There's just four bolts. You have to get the engine pulley off as well. This one was seized when I took the engine off, so I made it a little bit harder. But besides that, it's pretty simple. And I didn't really have any issues with the connector because the plug coming out of this engine fit perfectly on the plug on the tractor so I didn't have to change the alternator underneath the flywheel which saved me a lot of work so it turned out pretty good I'm pretty happy with that and the customer will be happy as well thanks for watching guys and you have a great day